here for cardrunners.com making a 510 pot limit Omaha video on full tilt this is my first hand at this table under the gun limp and a button raise and um, gonna re pop here or raise here um, alright fairly good flop to continuation bet I'll bet 270 into a 312 pot and he goes all in and have nothing so I have to fold So, probably just caught some kind of good flop, maybe a queen or something, or just queen and a flush draw, but still, my hand's pretty strong there, and I think I should definitely repop with it. Decent hand over here, king jack 10-7, and unfortunately this table, three of the players are short stacked. Nice table over here though. Three guys all, all on my right playing full stack, so I'll have position on them most hands. And I'll just check and fold here. Pretty scary flop, and this guy's short stack and probably not folding any decent ace or two pair at least. I have three aces on the button. I'll probably open this on the button if folded me, but if someone raises in front, just throw it away. Alright, so it's folded me on the button, so I'll raise it. And it's a pretty good result with this hand. Doesn't really flop all, all that often. Yeah, that's a huge flop for this guy. Alright, I guess one of these guys rebought, so now more of a nice full stack game, and again, having them on my right is nice. Alright, nice hand here in the small blind, I'm going to repop it. And. Mediocre flop, not bad. Again, I'll see that a little more than three quarters of the pot. He flat calls, and that's a pretty ugly turn card. It makes a low straight. I'm just gonna check. Kind of weird that if you, that you bet pot with a made straight, but all I have is a pair of queens here. I don't think I can continue. If I had a flush draw, I might s stick it in there, but definitely don't see any reason to put the money in with just a pair of queens there when I could be drawing dead. A pretty strong hand here on the button. Hmm. Not sure exactly what this comment means. I have queens with a suit. Marginally good enough to open under the gun plus one and a five handed table. No suits, I just pitch it. Alright, two garbage hands here in the big blind fold or raise from either player. Not sure if he's expecting me to type in the chat box in the video or what. Mm. Does have a point there. Do not currently have poker tracker running. So I have a chance here. I see I'll get that going quick. Sorry if it gets in the way. Alright. So, I'm gonna import my hands here and then I'll, I'll go over poker st tracker stats a bit at the end. Honestly, I don't 
think poker tracker stats are as important in Omaha as in Hold'em, and I don't really utilize them as much as most players. I just kind of play by feel, although I, I understand that players playing with a bigger player pool have a tough time remembering everybody. But the games I'm used to, there's about 20 regulars or so, and it's not all that hard to kind of just have their tendencies stored in your head. So, uh, I'm saying marginal, I'm just going to fold it to a raise out of position. So, uh, anyway, I don't really look at poker tracker stats all that much for Omaha, or even for Hold'em. I just, I'm, I've always been more of a play by, like, feel, like, get my own reads and not worry about numbers. I think it's more important to just kind of store it in your head what kind of hands players opening from what positions versus that he raises 22% of the time pre-flop, for example. That being said, poker tracker stats are obviously very helpful when you're playing against a very large prize player pool and don't have a whole lot of information on the players. Alright, so I'm loading up Poker Tracker here, and I will go over some stats at the end. Lately in Omaha, my game has tightened a bit from when I first started making videos. I think it was about 40, 35 or something crazy then. Uh, I'm saying marginal. I think I'll call a re-raise in position with it, though. King 9-9 nine, nine flop isn't really a great one to play at. I mean, always the possibility of him having kings or a hand like queen jack 10 9. I'd much rather play like a 10 6 6 flop, for example. Uh, I'll call a raise here. Fairly decent hand. Not a great flop here. Use bets full pot. I think I'll call it one bet and fold quickly to a turn bet. Even even though I picked up a nut flush draw, that doesn't change anything really. It does change that I have a chance to suck out on aces, but that's about it. Hmm, you check back the turn. I'm just gonna check the river. Yeah, my hand's good. Don't see any reason there to bluff a made hand. I was thinking of betting the representative hand because it's pretty obvious that he doesn't have any better than aces. But, I mean, there's only one hand I'm basically trying to get off there with like, with like a value bluff. So... I mean, there's no actual value in it. He's not going to call with worse. So I don't see any reason to turn my hand into a bluff there. Just checking it down is good. If he happened to try to make a thin value bet on the river with aces, then maybe I'd go for a check raise. With my image at these tables, though, check raise bluffs like that often don't go too well. Alright, I flop top and bottom here on a very ugly board. Um, just gonna take the free card here because I'm not really getting value from anything. That's a good turn, gives me a nut flush draw as well. And so, as long as Soho Kid doesn't raise, I'll at least call here. Well, not at least call, I will call. Alright, well, I'll have the nut flush draw and outs to a boat too. And it's the best card in the deck. Alright, I'm about 330. Mm. I, I was the one thing about calling with a nut flusher there is not often going to get paid off by thinking players because my hand can so easily be that. But by the same token, I'd often just check back the nut heart draw there. And if the hearts get there on the river, they'll often put me on the wrong flush draw and call. 
So as long as I don't always have diamonds there, it's still a good spot to profitably call. And then I, I can also bluff diamonds pretty easily if they hit and both players check like that. All right. Marginal hand here. It's just to a moon raise, I'm going to call it. And just check flop nothing, and it's a flop that can hit the other guys fairly hard. Unfortunately, this table is kind of breaking. Let's see if there's anything going on in other tables. Uh, there's a heads up table with two players there. I'll get on the wait list. Alright, this is a pretty good hand. I'm going to repop it. And fairly deep out of position. But he folds quickly to the re raise. There's also a 10 20 table going. So, if this table totally breaks, I'll probably just go to that. Alright, here's the heads up table. Let's try that. Make a continuation bet here, full pot. It was just bet full pot on the flop for continuation. It makes things easier. Sometimes bet slightly less. Alright. Marginal hand pre flop, but heads up. Good enough to call, I think. Uh, I'll just fold the flop. Very, very once in a while, I'd raise that flop just because it's unlikely he has more than one pair. Although on that board, he's very likely to take a card off with a queen or even an over pair. Uh, a nice, very nice flop for me over here. Set and the flush draw. And I think I'm just going to check and fold this turn. Yeah. Uh, I kind of think he just has a mid pair, but don't want to try to win every pot. Aces. Alright, so you can denote for future reference and he also like, did he have any suits there? Yeah, he, he did have a suit and he just flat called pre flop. Uh it was a pretty dangerous flop, I'm just gonna check it. Also I do have some outs to improve to a good hand, like a, a four or a four or a seven would be the best cards. Um having got here like that with bottom pair and a bad straight draw, I'm just gonna fold though. Much like Brian Townsend, I do think my heads up Potlum Omaha game could use some work. Um, another flush shot. I, I just brought a lot more draws out. I'm just going to check. Plus, my jack could be good. And now my jack 8 could easily be good. That being said, if he bets, I don't know if I call. Eh, whatever. It's cheap information to see what kind of hands he's limping with. And eh, my hand's good. So that's a bonus. Not a great hand over here, but it is heads up. Um, I have absolutely nothing, so not a bad spot to just take one stab, even though it's a pretty dangerous board that he's going to hit often. But here he doesn't, and I steal the pot with basically four high. Pair of twos is highly unlikely to hold up. Good enough hand to open on the button, heads up. And one thing in heads up Omaha that I have adjusted from when I first started playing is I do limp the button sometimes with pretty weak hands. Uh, right, this guy bets small into me. Not really sure what that means yet, but I'm just going to fold with not much of a hand. I think a lot of times he's wanting to get raised there. Pretty strong hand here, although the 8 doesn't play well, I'm going to call. And I'll check and call this while I've had he bet. Having not, I'll pot the turn. For value. 
Alright, this is a good fob to check back. I have top pair, but it's a very ugly board for it. Obviously can't go on if I'm raised. Alright, I'm just gonna check and give up, which I like to do once in a while. With just a garbage hand. That's 30 on the river. I think he has played, might as well call 30 and see what he has. Alright, yeah, the turn gave him a very strong hand. But see, if I bet that flop, I do have the best hand, but if nut flush right, he may raise, and then I'm put in a very bad spot. I wouldn't usually call the river out there, but just wanted a little bit of information. I think it's good to make some of those calls at the beginning of a match when you don't know much about the player. Alright, I turned the nuts here, and there's a lot of draws out. Uh, I'm just going to bet it out. Sometimes they go for a check raise there. Alright, look at this hand. Fairly weak hand. I'm just going to limp heads up and uh, this guy left. Let's try to find another game. Alright, play some 1020. He's going to fold this. I have a straight draw, but. Limp pie. He's probably not leading out with something fairly strong. Uh, Alright, I have an ace. It's going to lead out. My hand figures to be best. But if it's very vulnerable, I'd rather just win the pot right there. Um, I'll raise this. A lot of times I just limp a hand like this, but feeling frisky. And it's a bad flop, but he's taking a long time to check. A lot of times I take that to think that he has a hand, so I'm going to check it back. And it's the best turn in the deck. I'm going to repot it. So hopefully you didn't flop a set of 10s or 9s. And he folded the raise. Repotting definitely the correct play there, though, I think. Especially with several draws hitting. I picked up a combo draw, it's exactly the same way I play it. Oh, let's fold this hand. Pretty weak. Alright, nothing much going on with these hands. Don't really know anybody at this table except Eat My Aces, Sucko, Short Stacks, pretty much any 10, 20 and above, I guess. A couple of solid stacks on this table, though. You're adding 49er with about two buy ins, Love Tunnel with over one and a half. Alright, eight's double suited, good enough to raise heads up. This hand is double suited, but even though it's heads up, it's gonna fold or raise. Very junky hand. Alright, I'll live with this hand. Kind of garbagey hand, but it's heads up with position. And make a stab on this flop. And I take it down. Yeah, I'm I kind of like the limping some heads up strategy in Omaha. I really don't limp at all and hold them against my opponents. It's very, very, very aggressive. But in Pot 11 Omaha, I, just, I find that when I just start raising garbage hands like that, I get in too many marginal to bad situations or getting in, well, usually just flopping marginal hands and then like getting in big pots with some crappy two pair with no redraw. And this junkie, I'm just going to fold. Although, I guess the other hand wasn't that much better. 
Uh, three queens, not playable. One. But also, the button has such a huge edge heads up that I think it's a mistake to just always fold when I don't have a really nice hand, good worthy of opening. So, hence why I limp. Even even if my opponent knows I'm only limping marginal hands, there's not really a whole lot he can do. Like he can only raise the size of the pot, and in which case I can call and then. I'll play him on certain flops since most of his range is geared towards aces and high card hands. Very nice hand over here. Raise it into the gun. Um, I'm gonna repot here. I mean, he only been raised, he probably doesn't have that great of a hand, so if the flop comes something high, I can possibly take it away. I'm um, gonna see bet 100. Alright, for this flop, sometimes I try to rep aces here. I don't know, I don't even have any draw. Mm -hmm. Eh, I'll try it. We'll be good for my image anyway if it somehow gets shown down. Love tunnel calls, blank turn. I don't think he'd flat on that board with a great hand. Alright, he checks and calls. This makes me think he has a draw. So I'm going to push for my last 980. And he folds. So yeah, just the way he played it. I don't think... An ace-king 2 fly with a flush draw is just kind of... It's really scary to just be that check calling if he has like a set of kings or something so I think he definitely raised me especially since if he knows anything about my game he knows I'm an aggressive player and I definitely don't need aces to bet that flop now bidding the turn with with the draw there I kinda thought he might just give up a draw or but I guess he probably had a fairly good one but just thought he had no fold equity like maybe like maybe even as strong as queen jack 10 with hearts so, given that he had that hand and he has such a good chance of getting there, probably shouldn't have bet the turn. I just thought I had a solid amount of fold equity. Maybe I'm a little off there, though. But having got to the river like I did, I think it's a very easy push because his hand, the way he played his hand, is exactly like a draw. And I'm repping a very strong hand, so even if he happens to have like King Queen Jack 10. Even ace queen jack ten really. He's not very unlikely to just call with me up really light, even for less than a half pot. Oh wow, set of twos on the river. I was thinking that was a big pot, but then I forgot this is 1020, not 510. Um, I'm going to re here. Kind of marginal hand on the button, but um, I can have a wide range here, and I have position, so it's tough for him to play this. And even if he has aces and re-raises, re or uh, that small re-raise makes me really confused. I'm just gonna call it though. I think he re raised more with aces, so I don't think he has that. That's yeah, a very nice flop. He just he pots it. I'm just gonna go all in. And wow, he's like nothing. It's cut shot on the river, but no good, sir. Wow. Insta calls all in for his last 800 or so drawing dead too. Yeah, I kind of figured he didn't have a great hand there when he repotted. Uh, bet a little smaller than pot on the flop here. Get called and that's a bad turn. I don't have these or I don't have any high speed or anything. I'm gonna check it. 
he checks back. Still don't really see any value in betting this river, and he could still have like a small flush. Mm, um, kind of think maybe I should have bought it, but smart girl. And I check he quickly bets pot. Like it's conceivable, he could have something like king queen ten, but I would think he'd bet a turn from this. I don't know anything about this player though, and I mean, if, if I know if I have king queen ten, I'm definitely betting the turn there. Low streak out there on the river too. Um, uh, I don't know. I think more often than not, players have it in this spot. So I'm gonna throw my hand away. So, uh, I was, all right, let's go back to this hand a little bit. This guy makes a small re-raise out of, first he raises under the gun with queen 10, 7, 5, single suited with three hearts, which is a pretty awful loose open. And then when I re-raise, makes a small three bet. It's very interesting. Um, this hand, not quite good enough to play out of position to re-raise, although I'm tempted to against this guy, because now I can tell he's kind of a lunatic. And then he gets all his money in on the flop. I mean, he still had about double the pot after pre-flop. And then he just insta gets all his money in with a gut shot with no flush draw on this board. So, I mean, I think it's pretty standardly played by me, at least for the way I play poker. The way I play Omaha, anyway. Like, against it. The only time I wouldn't re-raise there is against a guy who I know is going to have aces like three quarters of the time is just going to repot. Like, it's not a disaster if I get repotted, but if I know I am every time, then it's not smart. Then I was thinking I might have to get somewhat tricky on the flop anyway to get all those chips, but then, no, it just makes it easy for me by potting. So, moral of the story, I'm going to try to play a lot of pots against this guy. And marginal hand in the cutoff. Suppose I'll open it. This is about as weak a hand as I'd open in the cutoff. And it is Love Tunnel's big blind. Kind of factored into my decision. Alright, he repots. I think you can have about anything here. And I have position, so I'm going to call it. And eh, it's sticky. Buckster instantly pushes for 928. Alright, I'm just gonna fold now. Yeah, another fairly loose put in there. Kinda hoping he hit. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so now he has some chips on the table, which is nice. What do I have there? 8763. Yeah, all over the nuts, so it's kinda relevant. But yeah. I mean, that's actually not a bad hand to repot, but it still is fairly loose. Alright, this guy's just playing like a complete maniac. Alright, so now... I'm just gonna try to play as many pots with him in position as I can. And only repot for value. Probably not repot hands like I did it there earlier. Alright, if I'm just top pair... This guy's a short stack. Uh, I guess I'm just gonna bet call. I mean, it's not the greatest thing in the world. I'm probably behind if I get my money in, but I mean, if he check raised all in, it's for less than the pot size. And, and I, I've also stuck out on two pair. I'm gonna gun lamp. Yeah, this guy raises. I was I was gonna pot it up myself. Now I'll just call with queen single suited. And. Queens here is like one of the worst hands to repot, because basically as is I'm trying to flop a queen or an overpair and a flush draw, but if I re-raise, then basically most people re-raising are going to put me on aces, even though it's not really true. So I'm not going to get much value post-flop if I flop an over overpair unless I have a flush draw with it. So 
and then also I, I leave it I leave myself the option of getting shut out of the pot. Alright, this is I popped a draw here, so I'm gonna see bet. Let's bet the size of the pot. Very tough for Jada to continue if he only has an overpair, which I assume he did. So kind of this is basically a bluff there, trying to get him off aces or kings and it's gonna work every time if that's what he actually has. So long as he doesn't have a diamond draw. Much more worried about Soho Kid there, because some of the hands he limps calls with another gun hit that flop pretty hard. But I think it's worth stabbing. Alright, there's a pretty weak hand on the button. Even if my boy over here raises, I don't think I can call. Yeah, it was full. That hand's just too weak. Anything marginal I'd call with there, but that hand's just very weak. Alright, pretty nice hand here. Good enough to raise from any position, really. Alright, I flopped a nut flush draw. And on the east side, I flopped. Good enough to bet out. That was a little less than pot, I guess. It's a bad turn card. It's gonna check it back. And it's on the river either. I don't think it's a great bluff spot because especially if it's a good, he's a good player. You, even if he had just like a marginal two pair, he could bluff check raise. And, but I think he probably what? <laughs> uh, okay. Wow. Check calls the flop with a jack high flush draw. That is horrible. Wow. <laughs> um kinda dumbfounded here. In fact I'm very dumbfounded. Um so yeah, he check calls with a the third nut flush draw, bear, and then a great bluffing board comes out, and he doesn't even bluff. I'm very confused here. <laughs> that play doesn't make much sense at all. Uh, don't really know what more to say on that one. Well, I do have one thing to say about that. This is why if you're if you're not playing Pot Limit Omaha yet, you should learn it because the no limit games these days have become very, very tough. I mean a five ten no limit game probably plays like twenty five fifty a few years ago when I first started out. So no limit. There are a lot of very tough players and this can make it tough to win good money. Now, Omaha, as shown here, Player pool is not nearly as strong. I mean, you saw this guy getting a bunch of bunch of money and drawing dead too. That's just not going to happen very often in the no limit games these days. But in Pot Limit Omaha games, there are a lot of weak weak players that make a lot of dumb plays. So 
this is why you should learn Omaha and learn it now. Uh, eight two eight two. Uh, could repot here and it's because it'd be very deceptive for up the set. I'm just gonna call though. And all right, I fought the I fought the set of deuces. This is the danger of playing this hand. Very vulnerable board for flopping the set here. Alright, this is a very marginal hand. It is against Love Tunnel, but still, I think I'm going to fold again. Alright, I'm going to call here. And if a blank comes on the turn and he bets, I'm going to fold. Now, if, uh, that's not a blank. I was going to say, if a diamond or straightening card hit, and I'd probably try to bluff. I'm just going to check this back for pot control. Avoid getting stacked. Um, I think I'm obligated to call a half puppet on the river. He could have a flush. I mean, we just saw how dummy can be with the check call on the other hand. And yeah, he has aces. So, I think I minimized my losses there. I had a boat on the turn. I mean, it is the underboat though. And I think it's pretty much a no brainer check on the turn. If I bet, I'm not really getting value from much, even against a weak player. I mean, even if, he, even if he has, like, a king high flush, I'm not getting two streets of value from him, so there's no real reason to bet the turn. And I think, given the player's tendencies, I have to call for a half pot on the river. Because he can be value betting some flush, maybe not even king high, maybe even, like, a ten high flush. Also, it was only half pot. If you had full pot, I'd be more inclined to fold. Nice flop for me here. It is fairly dry, though, and it's pretty obvious that I have a queen if I bet it usually. I mean, I would bluff it occasionally, but... So I'm just going to check it back and look like I'm playing pot control with aces. Try to induce some bluffs here. This is something I've been doing fairly often in Omaha lately with lots of success. And now I bet I call it some weird action. I think I'm obligated to take one off, and if I don't improve, full do a river bet. Uh, yeah, I don't see much value in betting with King Queen here, having overcalled the turn. Yeah, there's no way he's going to call with aces. I mean, the only possible value is if I had like half pot and he decides to make a crying call with like a slightly worse queen. But, um, definitely wasn't getting a call at that time. But, I mean, just say Sunrunner decides to not call the turn. I mean, I, I think he's calling with aces, but say he just doesn't have a calling hand. I'm, get, I'm probably getting two streets of value from Angelina there because she's putting me on aces, most likely, after I check the flop, call the turn, and then it's a very good spot for her to represent the queen. So, oftentimes, I'm going to get a second barrel bluff there. So... Could have even won a larger pot than that, but still probably got a little bit of extra value from checking the flop. Now, of course, if I'm going to bluff that flop, sometimes I do have to bet it a fair amount of the time with the queen, too. So I'll, I'll mix it up, but a check there is often really effective in inducing bluffs because players will just so often put you on over pair going for pot control. Alright, top two in a flush draw is a nice flop. Um, I'm gonna repot it. Let's get my money in. Even if he has a set of fours, I'm a favorite. If he has a set of fives, it's probably very close. Still, I'm not sure exactly. Alright, flat calls. and Not a great turn card, but since he checked and called, he probably has a draw. The only hand I really think I'm losing to here is Jack Nine, so I'm just gonna pot and get the money in. I mean, I guess it's possible that he's just waiting for a safe turn with like a set of fours because it's kind of an ugly board. Alright, there's 129 left. It's not the best river card I've ever seen, but I mean, 
one thing I see me so, might be being beat by is like eight six seven, but I have to pay it off at this point. Queen, okay, two way draw. That was one of his tries was dead. Very unfortunate river. So, yeah, I think it's pretty poorly played by him. I mean, he does have a combo draw. And again, again, here I go back to the Omaha games being so nice. This is why you learn. Because, I mean, this is a four-way limp pot. I'm not fooling around there. So, I mean, yeah, if I have a set, he has about 50% equity on the flop. But if I have his flush draw cover, he's in a world of trouble. And, yeah, the only way he's winning the pot is if he backdoored something like that or hits a three or, or a two or a seven, I mean. So, not very great odds. Even if he turns a seven, I have three pair and a flush draw so I have a lot of outs to win the pot so yeah I think that's pretty poorly played by him alright um, I think I'm going to end the video fairly soon see if there's any other tables to hop on and yeah you get your picture there uh, Alright, there's another 1020. Sit for a few minutes anyway. Probably getting the video fairly soon though. Um, Alright, King 10 10 flop. Now there's a flush drop present. So, I think I'm going to bet out this time. And if I get raised, I'd fold. Because I could be drawing dead. And people are just very unlikely to check raise a worse hand there. Alright, let me get let's filter my poker tracker to hands from today quick. We'll go over that in a couple minutes. Nothing flop here, and I do think this two hand is too weak to raise pre flop, even with just a button limp or three handed. And yeah, let's pull the turn back. Alright, so I'll play one more orbit at this table after I go through my blinds and then quit both and look at some poker tracker stats. His hand is pretty marginal, but in five hand in the game, I'll raise it. Garbage hand there. Caller, two callers. Basically, I don't. Oh, that's a scary flop. Alright, I'm gonna bet it out. I mean, right now I'm probably not losing, it's just they have a million outs to outdraw me. It's a fairly good card, but. I mean, if I bet here, they're probably gonna fold bear trips, so I don't see any value in betting. I'm about half pot here. And fold to a raise. That might even be too ambitious. Yeah, he pretty, pretty quickly just makes it like three times my bet. Yeah, I don't think I can call a raise here. Probably shouldn't have even bet the river, to be honest. Probably should have just checked and folded. But, it certainly looks like Ace four or so, maybe even ace king, but I don't think I can call. So yeah, that's just a sticky situation, especially when I get called in both spots. Both players probably have an ace, 
only reason I bet the river is because the turn and river were pretty innocuous cards, and I had one of each in my hand, making it more unlikely that they didn't have them. I kind of think Love Forever just had Ace King, though. Um, marginal hand, but I'm getting nice odds. Alright, but I thought the second not flush draw, but note that also the Ace of Clubs is not on the board, meaning I could be drawing dead if he, if anybody had the, like, the nut draw. So, alright, I'm going to call here. Second up, flush now. If you bet the pot on the river, I think I fold. He checks. I'm going to bet about three quarters of the pot here. Here, I'm going to go for the check raise. And he folds. I'm just going to repot it here. My hand figures to be good. And I'll most certainly get it all in if he wants to. Just hope he doesn't have a set of kings. And that's a nice hand to be against. Drawing the three outs. So, kind of a setup there. I mean, on that board, I'd also check raise king, queen, and lots and lots of flush draw, like combo draws, like ace, jack of spades, and so. And get the usual trash talk. I mean, I'm not sure what I did to warrant that besides get a nice flop. Kind of makes me want to play a little more since he's probably going to be tilted. Maybe another couple orbits. And that sounds a little weak. Even four handed. Yeah, I mean, my play is obviously very standard there, and so is his on that board. There's no way I'm folding bottom set to me on that board. There's too many draws and even worse made hands. Or is this hand? I kind of like little low hands like these. Somewhat tilted and have position on him. Suppose I'll call. Flop top two. I'm just gonna flat call here with no redraws. On a safe turn, I'll get my money in. Nice safe turn. Um, kind of tend to just flat actually. I'm just gonna flat call because I think if he has aces or I don't know. Uh, I'll flat call. Alright, that's a nice river. And this is definitely a good spot to bet for value. So now it looks like I have a draw. Um, there's no way in hell I'm folding it to this guy. Maybe he could have even raised the river for value there because he has aces a lot. But, yeah, this is why I wanted to stay in the game. He actually he had a really nice draw there. But, I think his river bluff is very careless. I mean, although it does kind of look like I would draw myself. But, I mean, if he wants if he wants to bet, maybe like half pot or something. Although then I could possibly bluff shove. But, that wouldn't make a lot of sense for me. So, I probably wouldn't do it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I played that hand pretty well. I got him to bluff off a lot of chips, and if the, if the straightening card hit and he bet, I was may I may have folded. I mean, I'm not folding the low one because that's just such an unlikely hand. But I mean, if an ace queen ten or nine fell, like it's that's a very scary card for him to bet because that's. A lot of my range is hands that are drawing those straights. So I think if he bet those, I actually would have gave him credit and folded, even as tilted as he was. But I kind of like my line. Maybe could have raised a turn, but uh, not necessary. Uh, I'll 
continuation of that size of the pot here. And it's a nice turn. I'm gonna go for a check raise. Yeah. I think check calling is a little dangerous on this board. So. Nothing wrong with taking down the money in the middle right there. Uh, check calling actually not a bad play. And this guy obviously hates me. No idea who he is, never even heard of him, but clearly he doesn't like me. I don't know, in hindsight, maybe that last hand I should have just check called and check called the river. The only thing I'm really worried about is a club. Alright, I think I kind of have to wrap up the video soon, though. It's been about. Wait, long thing. 50 minutes. Uh, this guy raises from the small blind. It's usually pretty strong. I see him in a repot and then fold to, a, fold to a 4 bet. I think that's a pretty good line here. I define, really helps me define his hand. If he 4 bets, I snap fold this. If he doesn't, then I know I have the best preflop hand and play accordingly. So, like I said, snap fold. Only one hand you can have here. And pretty loose is put in, and he gets rewarded. Alright, Sunru is not folding anything to me, so this is not a good spot to see bet. <laughs> it would be kind of nice to float his turn bet and then make some play on the river and show it, but I don't think I'm going to get carried away here. I mean, if I had 10 10 or 10 9, that would be such a perfect spot to check this flop. Get some guy who's tilted and just wants to win money off me at any cost. Alright, this is a solid hand. Probably gonna get at least one caller. <laughs> uh, I think I might actually 4 bet this for value. I think he's re raising like anything. So yeah, this is not a very strong hand, but I think I'm way ahead of his range. Uh, it's kind of a crappy flop though, but he did flop a 7 at least. And he flopped better than me. Ah, uh, suck it would have been nice there. <laughs> uh, I don't think I like repotting with kind of weak kings here out of position against th this guy right now. Some miss plotting. See if he keeps running his mouth or if he backs down. Alright, and I'll play one more over and quit on these tables, by the way. I really don't hate my play with there with the King Jack, Ace King Jack Seven either. I mean, I just thought he was betting more or less anything, and just checks down there. I'm happy to take the pot. And obviously, Sunder has absolutely nothing to say now. Let's throw it with him a little more. It would be fun if I actually got him to play me. Maybe I could make a little bonus coverage. Alright, so anyway, I'm going to sit out and get some of my blinds here. Unfortunate that I lost that last hand. Very nice hand here. <laughs> I 
gonna sit out here. And then once I sit out, I'll look at the poker tracker stats a little bit. Gonna fold here, marginal hand. gonna fold. Alright, so the time we'll get poker striker stats. Alright, so this is my session. Had a, gotten a little better luck in that four bet pot there. Could be up five buy ins at ten twenty. As is I'm still up about three. Did lose a buy in at five ten though. I mean I think basically a function of luck for the most part. Well, I did also get, or no, that was, that was 1020, that hand where I decided to bluff with the nothing on the ace high flop. But, uh, I don't know, let's see some hands from the 510. I mean, I think it was mostly just unlucky to losing money. Let's see. Biggest loss pot on this was just kind of st standard, where I had the queen jack 10-8, nice hand repotted, and then got a very bad turn. I mean, if the turn comes better, I could pick up that pot there. And on the other table, well, yeah, the first hand, again, I repotted a very strong hand, and I guess just ran into something that hit a nice flop. Again, I'm going to take that pot down fairly often on the flop. Um... Uh, with the 8 8 2 2, I actually played this hand very well. I think I don't think I should fold this hand pre flop on the button with the double pair. But then, once the east side board hits and there's four in the pot, I think I'm obligated to call one bet with a set. I mean, it would be, it'd be pretty sick if I could just fold a set on the flop there. But again, also, I had the plan of possibly bluffing scary turns. And then, once the full house came. I just checked and called a half pot bet and ba basically lost them in. I don't think I could fold a half pot there again against the player I thought was fairly weak. Um, oh, this hand was, yeah, this hand was very unfortunate. So if I win this hand, I'm up at five ten. This is where I got the vast majority of my stack in way ahead with with him drawing to and well on the flop he was drawing to a, a two or a seven. It's not a diamond, and then. Also picked up the outs, the t ten is not a diamond outs, and then unfortunately hit that on the river. But I mean, barring a very unlucky river there, I actually w would have made money at five ten as well. And ten twenty, I ran fairly well, although I mean, obviously could have ran better if I didn't lose the four bet pot. Here it is. I mean, remember my read at the time was that this guy's on tilt and just re raising like almost any two cards, so. Ace King Jack Seven is well, well ahead of a range of basically any two cards. Well, anything playable. I don't think I don't think he's re-raising it with like two, two, two Jack or something. But I mean, very, very wide range, and of which I'm ahead. He did actually have a, a pretty nice hand there, and flop pretty well for it. But I still had several outs to suck out there. Unfortunately, did not hit one, but. Overall, I did run fairly well at 10:20, and results show I won about three buy-ins. Uh, as for numbers, see, ran at 31.25. This is about exactly what I've been running at for the last month or two since I've tightened up a bit. I mean, like I said, my old Omaha game was about 40.35. I think that was just too loose, raising too many hands under the gun, especially. And too many just very very weak hands in the on um, in the cutoff mostly, the button it's kind of excusable. And aggression factor didn't, didn't really come out smooth here. I mean, it was kind of fluky. Normally, I think my normal aggression factor goes something like maybe five, three, two fifty or something, but street by street. Um, notice from the from the small blind, thirty five. BPIP, that's actually kind of high to it, I think. Well, I did play a bit of heads up, but yeah, excuse me, the 11 heads up hand, it was 100%. 
Uh, the other hands that averages out to about 28 or 29 BPIP from the small blind. I see fairly high. Probably means some hands were folded around, and just I caught a disproportionate amount of good hands in the small blind. I remember repotting a couple. Usually that would probably be even tighter. Uh, showdown stats aren't really that. I don't know. Honestly, I don't really put much stock into them. And from a short session like this, that wouldn't be accurate anyway. So I guess that's about it. This is Stinger. Hope you enjoyed the video.